welcome, welcome back. Welcome back to Passions Podcast, the podcast where we talk about the soap opera Passions. Uh, I am your regular host, Latara, back again with Dr. Eric Vera. Yeah, it's uh, it's been such a fun month, hasn't it? And now we are officially in spooky season. Well, spooky season did start for me in, usually starts in September, but we are in October now. So this is the time for Tabitha Timmy hijinks. It's the perfect time for Warlock Island, honestly. Yeah. And speaking of spooky season, Halloween, I'm, I think I want to do maybe a Halloween party for the patrons. So oh, like, oh, oh, it, Halloween's on a Tuesday. So I can't, I can't imagine everybody's going to be out doing it. And yeah. honestly, let's be honest. We're all, if you're listening to this podcast, you old like me, <laughs> like we're, we're old. We're not out like doing the Halloween party stuff the same way we used to yeah. be doing it. You know what I mean? So I hope nobody took offense to that, but no. I'm old. <laughs> I'm I love Halloween. Halloween is one of my favorite holidays. And my nephew's birthday is around that time. So it was always really fun uh, time. I, I hate that I won't be home for it um, because we usually do a scary movie marathon all day long. And we have scary movies playing while my my dad and my uncle pass out candy to the kids and we have so many kids go to the house it's really really fun um so I hate when I miss it but what I do do is I do give my adult students candy at the university and they're always so happy about it they're like you're the only professor who gives us candy I'm like uh hell yeah because it's Halloween I don't care how old you are I want a fucking Snickers listen I grew up like fairly religious like we didn't we didn't celebrate halloween at all i never got to dress yeah. up for halloween growing up right so now at, once i got older i was like excited to like dress up for halloween and throw parties and stuff and then once i started teaching it was like halloween was like a big deal and we would yeah. do like a halloween um contest costume contest for like the faculty and yeah. i would i would always i wouldn't always win but i won like three times yeah hey <laughs> yeah. no i um yeah, but because I love dressing up and doing yeah. the stuff and giving out the candy. But anyway, yes, we're going to have a Halloween party. I think we're going to have a Halloween party. I'll, you'll check the socials for information about that. But um, just like over Zoom, dress up as maybe your favorite character or something. And yeah. we'll, watch, we'll maybe watch some episodes of Passions, like some pick some spookier episodes of Passions and watch them maybe out of chronological order. So join the Patreon if you're interested in that. We just had a watch party that was so fun. I'm so sad I missed it. I heard it was fantastic. It was it was a good, 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 good time. One of our patrons, Maria, has a, but get this, everybody. She used to run a site that was devoted to Gwen Hotchkiss. <laughs> Can you even believe? <laughs> It's oh. nice too. No, it's nice it's too. So no, cool. I, I, I have to respect the grind. I respect the hustle. Like honestly, like you know, we all know Gwen's not my yeah. girl. But look, I'm not dedicated enough to Teresa. <laughs> I wasn't back then anyway. Well, I didn't know how to back then. Yeah. I didn't have the know how. But that's it was it was really cool. It had forums and we found it on the Wayback Machine. So um, I'll have I'll ask so Maria fun. if it's okay if I like share the links or whatever. Oh and, yeah, and people can, that would be cool. Can kind of go and look at look into it because it's really it's really a, a amazing like resource blast from the past. It's got a lot of pictures and it's really cool. So that's anyway, so that's cool. uh, just an example of some of the shenanigans we get to get into on the during the watch parties because we don't just watch the episode. We like hang out talk passions yeah. and yeah. you know so if you're looking for a group of people to talk passions with definitely join the patreon and uh join us for a party or two all right with that said it's time to do the show it's time to get into these episodes 536 through 540 yes eric yes yeah, right well thank god okay because <laughs> that's what i watched and it was cool this week like i we got we got some stuff happening yes. there was some stuff that was like Honestly, the Julian Teresa stuff is very hard to watch. I'm not gonna lie. I, yeah, it's it's getting is it has gotten into hard to watch territory. Um, but I do like that our plot is moving forward. I know we have yeah. to get over this this hump to get into Teresa's next arc. Yeah, we are gonna start with magic this week. Sound good? Sounds good to me. <laughs> Sound good. We're gonna start with magic. These children over on Warlock Island, where apparently once the clock strikes strikes midnight, the the warlocks will be able to like 
not cross over, but they will be at the height of their powers in the other yeah. dimension. Yeah. I don't understand. They haven't, they have not fully explained the rules about these warlocks. And yeah. Yeah. like, is it going to actually come up? Because it hasn't yet. Tapha just keeps yeah. talking about it. Yeah, there's not been any like, um, besides the moaning, whenever we heard them say Tabitha's name, uh, there hasn't been any uh, indication that there are other things out there that are going to try and kill Tabitha and, Timmy's, Tabitha and Timmy besides Norma. Um, so yeah, and they haven't explained any more lore, which is interesting because they usually do try and set up a little bit more. Um, no. The best we have is Ross with his Palm Pilot. Oh, Lord. Reese this week. He was insufferable. Very insufferable. So. I, I, I have a I have a little MVP in the kids section, a little MVP <laughs> in the magic section. Um, because Ross was intolerable. That's the perfect word. Wait, who's your MVP? I'd love to hear. Uh so as we get into it, uh there were a various amount of times where Jessica just told Reese to shut up in so many ways that it was very fun <laughs> she did she she, she kept it. telling me like shut it. up stop she it leave it. tabitha alone yeah okay so let's let's talk about it let's talk about yeah. it first of all y'all y'all already know charity is still doing her thing yeah. <gasps> Danger! Teresa and Sheridan are in danger. Oh, yeah. Teresa! No, she took one sip and she'll regret it for the rest of her life. Yeah, it's very dramatic. The whole time, and usually they give us some kind of flashback or some kind of uh, uh, visual for her premonition. But this week they were like, "We don't have time for that. Just act crazy," and that's what she did. Yeah, yeah. So um, she's being crazy at, you know whatever she's seeing yeah. stuff in the fire it, it it we get a lot of back and forth between what's going on out at the fire with um miguel charity um jessica and reese and what's happening in this tent yes. because Kay has snuck into miguel's tent before bedtime yeah has snuck into miguel's tent and proceeds to remove her underwear, but keep her cam camisole on. Yeah. But takes her panties off and like throws them at Simone, who, who has come into the Which tent is, after her to get her out of there. That was so, I mean, I understand girlfriends can be cool and chill like that, but it was just kind of weird for her to be getting naked in front of Simone. Like, I, I thought it was just like, okay. Um, it just, uh, Kay's plan here is re worse than dumb. It's hor It's a horrible, it's a non-plan. I don't understand what she thinks the the outcome's gonna be of this. Like, I don't, what does she see happening? This girl has no foresight whatsoever. Yeah. Everybody's still awake. This isn't, you're not sneaking. Yeah, this isn't no. sneaky. Like, everybody's gonna go, at, yeah. at best case scenario, everybody's gonna go to their, their tents at the same time and Miguel's going to find you in his and like, quietly shoo you out of there worst case yeah. scenario he yells at you drags you out naked like you know in front of everybody yeah so <laughs> i don't well and then the overall thing is of course Kay is saying i'm gonna sleep with miguel tonight and i'm going to get pregnant that is her her main plan did you ever watch or did you watch um shameless i watched the uk version Okay, so in the the US one, she Debbie Gallagher basically has the exact same plan is to get pregnant with this uh, guy's baby. And I'm like, if she would have seen these episodes of Passions, she might have maybe not done that because it yeah. doesn't work out for anybody. It's a bad, it's always a bad plan. Getting yeah. pregnant, I'm gonna look into the camera when I say this, getting pregnant on purpose by a man who does not like you or is not interested in you is always a bad plan. I'm, now I know nobody here needs to hear that. I know y'all don't need to hear that, but if somebody did need to, if I even reach one person, <laughs> I have done my duty. Cause that's not gonna work out for you, babe. But yeah, that's her plan. She's gonna get pregnant by Miguel. Um, she, Simone is begging her, begging her to leave this tent. Stop. This is so stupid. Like, and she keeps saying charity will kill you. It was interesting to me how some Simone kept saying like, charity's going to kill you. Like as if we've seen this like horrible temper from charity, yeah. which we have not. Yeah. I, I just thought that was, I'm like, what is she going to do? I mean, the most we ever get from charity is like side eye. 
and and even then it's like the smallest little itty bittiest reaction yeah like, it's not it's never not like all that strong even when she thought Kay didn't have a soul she just was like yeah. i'm gonna tattletale like it wasn't yeah, yeah. It was and or her love for her cousin like you know was she was she was like oh something's wrong with her but like it was never any i've never seen her have anything like that and i think no. that's the whole point of charity right is that she's that good um so i don't know yeah but simone keeps driving that yeah. point god home. bless the russell women god bless the russell women having to deal with their crazy ass friends yeah so meanwhile Tabitha, let's talk about Tabitha and Timmy, who have snuck away from the campsite. They went into their tent thinking that Norma would think that they were, had gone to bed. They, they made like yeah. a big scene about it. It was really funny. Yeah. Um, and then they snuck away from the tent, snuck away from the kids and went to get on the boat. They get on the boat. They, <laughs> Tabitha notes that it either is or is similar to Dean Martin's old boat. <laughs> and they're like, hey, there's a lot of alcohol up in here. They are so excited. They found the exact ingredients that they need to make Martimmy's. Martimmy's, yeah. Yeah, but the Dean Martin joke was good. And then and Timmy's like, who's Dean Martin? Like, <laughs> Oh, boy. In, in case nobody know, if you need to know, is the member of the Rat Pack, you know, an old mm -hmm. 50s, 60s movie star. Probably Singer. always had a martini. Mar yeah, martini he, in his hand. yeah. No, he was. Yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, but back in the back in those days, they they found it. Um, what do you call? It? What do you say? Like charming to always be drunk. Now we yeah. would be like trying to send him to the Betty Ford Clinic. You know, like <laughs> he's got a problem. Yeah, but you know, every time I think about those things, um, just recently the casino that I go to. One of their gifts was a um, like a whiskey display set with the glasses and everything, mm -hmm. and I was it's very pretty, but I'm like I don't have a place to put that, and I'm like it made me think of Mad Men in 1950s, like where just there was whiskey everywhere, like alcohol everywhere, and and it was and getting drunk at the office totally fine. It was just yeah. part of the grind. Hey, so that, but then Timmy are I mean this is their dream come true. They're about to be safe and they have alcohol, so they're good. Yes. So they're on the boat. They're trying to figure out how to drive it away and strand the children. And... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tabitha said, fuck them kids. Fuck them kids. And uh, then Norma gets on the boat and they're talking about Norma. But, and she can, yeah. she's overhearing them. She's standing right in the doorway. I can't remember the things they said, but they were all insults. She's crazy. Yeah. She'll never catch uh, us now. You know, we got to yeah. get off, get out of here before th that crazy lady who talks to that, we like her weird father's bones, yeah. whatever. Well, Norma locks them into the cabin and then she pours gasoline all over the boat and she sets it on fire in a game set match. <laughs> Want to know who started the fire? Norma, Norma started, started the fire. The fire. <laughs> it was always burning since the world's been turning. Norma started the fire. She did. She started the fire. And it's so and... funny because Timmy is like, please don't burn Timmy. He's mm. highly flammable. It was interesting. It, oh, it's so interesting what they do with Timmy because is he alive or is he not? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, is he a doll or is he not? Like, can, I'm, I mean, burning up matter wise will kill him. Right. But yes. we'll, we'll, and we'll get there. Actually, I'm going to bring this. I'm going to bring this point back in a minute. Okay. So yeah, because they're on I the boat. Questions too. Thank you. They're on the boat. It's starting to burn. They're trying to get out, but they can't. Timmy finds like a doggy door and he's like, look, Tim, look, Tabitha, a doggy door. And she's yeah. like, that's good for you, Tim Tim, but I can't get out. But she says to him, she says, save yourself. Leave me here. Save yourself. Genuinely. She wasn't being sarcastic. Save yourself. And he came back. He was like, no, I, I won't leave Tabitha. Oh, he says, I'll stay with you. Yeah, life isn't worth living without his princess. Oh, and then they and like lay down together and like accept their fate, basically. Yeah. They're so, ready to, to die. So that's what's happening down on the ship, on the boat, yeah. away from the campsite. Let's go back to the campsite where Charity exclaims, The fire is here! Yes. <laughs> that delivery 
was so good. So it's this idea because she kept having a premonition about Sheridan being in some kind of boat accident, the fire. She has this explosion thing. And so now we are, she is led to believe she was either wrong or something like she, she's kind of confused because she didn't see this fire, but she's like, oh man, maybe I was wrong. And it, this is the fire. This, this girl has the most useless fucking powers. Her powers are so useless because th they're not practical. They don't help anybody. Like yeah. any situation where she's in, and it happens a lot, right? Where she doesn't see the thing that actually is like, she never sees like what's going to happen where she is. Yeah. It seems like, like for instance, with the with the church, she didn't see. Why didn't she see Ivy driving into the church? Why didn't she see yeah. like, oh, that bad thing? Why did she only see the bad thing that actually did not happen? Yeah, you see, oh, and, and poor her because then she's surrounded by people who just continue to gaslight her all the time. Uh, like it's just, I, I don't know. It, it. I wish the sh I wish the show would have leaned in to the Standish women's powers more they will eventually but i really think that it would have been much more fun to kind of like let they all have different powers you know like they all have different things and um you know but i eventually they'll get there but not with charity yeah so her useless powers she knows there's a fire she thinks it's gonna be you know sheridan and teresa she knows something's wrong with teresa too and but she keeps seeing a fire a fire a fire there's a fire and then Miguel's asking her, like, what is it? Where is it? Who, who, who does it? What's the problem, right? And she's like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And that's when she finally realizes once the boat catches fire, which they can't see yet. Yeah, yeah. She says, the fire is here. Yeah. And they're like, here? Where? And again, she doesn't know where because she has the most unhelpful powers. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying she doesn't have powers. They are real. Her powers are real. And I understand, like, I get it. But they are so unhelpful always, it feels yeah. like. And I'm, I, I'm, again, led to believe that she just doesn't know how her, 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 she doesn't know how to harness these powers. She doesn't know how to, like, make these powers work. And I think, again, that's the whole point, right? Tabitha's trying to make sure that they don't make love because then she'll come into her full powers. She'll actually know what the fuck she's doing. <laughs> yeah, so she... She says, I don't know where exactly where the fire is, but it's close, very, very close. And then she starts to panic that Kay and Simone are the ones that are in trouble um, because they haven't seen Ch Kay or Simone in a while and they can't find them even though they're just in Miguel's tent. These and the kids start yelling for them like, Kay, Simone, Kay, Simone. And Simone's like, we got to get out of here. Like, what are we going to do? And Kay's like, you go. Keep them, keep them busy. I'm gonna stay here. Yeah. She she was gonna stay there in her underwear or whatever, until she realized that like they were gonna go find this fire. And yeah. here's what she says. <laughs> Look, okay. For, so first, Simone runs out, says she ha can't find Kay, um, doesn't know where Kay is, and so they all run down to where the boat fire is because th by this point the fire has gotten bigger and they can actually see it. They see the fire. They run down there. Kay is st Kay stays in this tent with no panties on. I don't know if you know this song. This is very niche. It's very very old. You know what? I'm not even gonna. Yeah. Mm, Wait, should I sing it? What? Should I not? It goes, <laughs> ain't got no panties on, ain't got no panties on, oh, ain't yeah. got no panties on, on the dance floor. <laughs> uh, see, and I thought, that is so funny. I have not thought about that song in a long time. I I thought you were going to sing from uh, This is the End when uh, when they sing to Rihanna, take your panties off. I thought it was going to be. Uh, I've never seen that. I've never seen oh, that. Oh, it's so fun. It's so good. No, a, I've never seen it. I remember when it came out, it had all the celebrities in it, but I've yeah, never seen yeah. it. But, but yeah. yeah, no, she she ain't got no panties on. And yeah. she decides, you know what? I'm going to just stay here, panties off, and let them like deal it. with this fire. If, and when Miguel gets back, he'll still that, find me. 
how are they going to not go check in like and find you like you're just gonna wait and you don't ugh, it made no sense that was so silly also at one point Kay again talking about getting pregnant she's like he won't leave me after I provide him with his a little bambino I was like what a weird word choice for her to use to talk about their potential child but whatever yeah, she where we are she is not this little plan is so trifling so yeah. <laughs> and poorly conceived so anyway she's gonna stay in this tent while everybody else goes to the fire but guess what the one thing that gets her out of the tent and p makes her put her panties back on is that she <laughs> she says you know what actually i better go down there because what if what if charity rescues a bunny from a fire or something and then that'll just make miguel love her even more i better go down there and rescue a bunny myself <laughs> girl what the fuck is wrong with you this girl can you, can, can you imagine a pantyless k searching in the woods for a bunny rabbit to chunk into the fire no oh, she's to go she... save it she is so funny though that was so funny yeah. to me that was so funny to me let me go because charity might find a save a bunny from a fire and miguel love her any even more um so the the so everybody ends up down here at this boat they all realize that tabitha is trapped on the boat yeah. um and then they can't find a way to get onto the boat, but eventually Miguel decides I have to save, Yay. I have to take save Tabitha. I just have to take off my shirt. <laughs> so a, a couple, a couple things that happened here that I was responding to in real time. These things will eventually get resolved. But one, the kids see Tabitha's in there, and I wrote "F you, Ross," because the first thing he says is, "There is no putting that fire out. Tabitha's gonna die." But he says it with no like no um like he's just ruthlessly factual and i'm like i got so mad then before this happens because they stall they're at the dock like what do we do what do we do for several segments and i yelled while i was watching this i'm like set miguel's ass in there he survived the fires of hell he can't go in there for five seconds to go take care of tabitha well he gains major points for me because miguel does say I gotta go save Tabitha. And I was like, all right, respect. And Eat. actually, one of my favorite lines this week came from Reese. I'm sorry. One of oh, my yeah. favorite oh, no, lines I, I, I came from you... Reese. When Miguel goes up there and he's like fighting the flames or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, what's his name? Reese says, well, technically these flames should be no problem for Miguel. He did survive the fires of hell. And I, <laughs> and I did. I laughed and I said, oh, my God, Ross just said what I was thinking. I was like, he 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 they at least they acknowledged it. And I was grateful for that. Yeah. Uh, Charity's literally freaking out there because Miguel is over there and she's doing some hardcore yelling and screaming. Uh, and Tabitha and Timmy are slowly uh, kind of knocking out because of the smoke inhalation. Yeah, they're losing consciousness. They're just laying on the floor at this point. Yeah. Um, and unresponsive, really. Yeah. Miguel manages it, it, to get on the boat. Miguel. Yeah, yeah, she can hear Miguel at this point. Yeah. Yeah, and she's like, "Oh, okay, that's a." New I think she said something about like, "It's that's nice of him." When she's like, "He's coming to save us." That's nice of him. <laughs> he's, he's probably gonna die too. She's <laughs> like, "What? I wouldn't do the same." But yeah, for real. <laughs> but um, Miguel makes it in. He he knocks down the door um heroically grabs tabitha gets her up on her feet she grabs tammy by the legs she's very weak she's trying to hold on to him but she drops him as miguel uh, swiftly pulls her out and off and onto the no. dock and whoa this was it it was actually kind of like not actually yeah. kind of sad but it was sad like yeah. she emoted so beautifully i mean there's such goofy characters tabitha yes. tabitha tabitha and timmy are such goofy characters it's so refreshing when you see like the sincerity out of them yeah. on, on something and and tabitha was really like no i have to go get timmy like my <laughs> life he's my life he means everything to me yeah when uh when Kay and Simone finally sh well they are there but when Kay finally shows up she figures out what's going on she's freaking out about Miguel Ross again Kay's like oh my God she Miguel's in that room 
To which Ross responds, in nautical terms, the room is actually referred to as the bridge, my sweet. Mm. And they finally just yell at him. And I think it's just because, like, who cares? <laughs> yeah. Who cares? Like, Thank you for just speaking for us. Yeah, because he he was just so obnoxious this entire it was very, time. Oh, it was like first of all, also I, I I mean I don't want to make anybody perform roles, but like help out. You're just gonna let Miguel go in there again. And Miguel go. did tell him to stay here with the girls. He does that. They do that to Reese all the time, though. You've seen that, right? Yeah. Stay here. No, you stay here with the girls. As if the girls are in any danger. You the one no. going on a that on a boat that's on fire. Yeah. I mean, because they don't know about Norma, so yeah. The girls are say, fine. Yeah, when they when they dropped Timmy and Timmy's in there for a good long while. At one point, they zoom in on Timmy and it's like he's he's taking his last few breaths. And then as they pan over, they just show him our Timmy, uh, like with yeah. flames in the background. I took a screenshot of it because I was like, oh, this kind of looks cool. <laughs> yeah, it was it was like it was emotional. Like they they got yeah. me, but um he, yeah, there's the flame in Martimi. <laughs> that would be there's a there's a drink, the, yeah, the oh, flaming flame, martini, like a flaming mo like from the Simpsons, a flaming Homer. We get a flaming martini. A that flaming does sound martini. Cool. I, yeah, I just made up a new drink. Um, so it's got fireball in it. Ooh, oh, oh, <laughs> flaming martini. Yeah. Okay, so Tabitha is pulled off the boat. She starts to panic because she realizes that she dropped Timmy. She actually doesn't realize it until yeah. Miguel says to her, she says, where's Timmy? Where's Timmy? And Miguel says, I'm sorry, Tabitha, you dropped him and we didn't have time to go back. Yeah. And she's like, no, no, I have to get him. And Miguel is restraining her, holding yeah. her back. But she eventually breaks away and gets on that boat and she gets to Timmy. She yes. gets there and she and she gets him off. And when she brings him off the boat, he's unresponsive. She throws him down on the docks and she starts doing CPR on this doll, which <laughs> Reese points out. He's like, Tabitha's doing CPR on that doll. It was it was a funny sight to behold because she first of all, she wasn't doing it correctly at the beginning. Then she started to it looked a little bit more realistic. Yeah. Um, but it is funny to think like we're seeing we're seeing her with that doll but like they're actually seeing her with this doll and what they're what she might be thinking because you already know she's kooky but like she risked her life to get on a flaming boat to go save this doll and she's now performing cpr on it and it was it's terrible yeah to look. and timmy does come too he wakes back up he takes a breath and this is where this is where my issue is why would smoke inhalation hurt timmy i know i that's i don't know the rules for Tabitha and Timmy. I mean, like, also, like, Tabitha's been burnt before. Like, um, you know, it's, I don't, I don't know what the rules are. Question. And then you don't have the answer, but I'm going to, I'm going to posit yeah. this question to the universe. Is Tabitha, is Tabitha even a witch if she doesn't have powers? Like, what makes a witch? You know what I mean? Yeah. <sighs> well, I, I, that's the thing is just like sometimes it's, it's, it's so difficult. The show changes the rules all the time, but there's times, right, where Tabitha, even without her powers, can't work enough up. So, like, she has... I think maybe they might have just reduced her... Like, she always says her powers are gone. She has nothing. But every once in a while, she's, like, able to, like, juice some up. So I don't know... Well, see, I usually she has she finds like a magical item, yes. and so my question is, could anybody use that magical item? Right? Could I, yeah. not having been a witch, be able to use a magical item? Like, again, what makes her a witch at this point yeah. if yeah. she doesn't have any power from within? I don't yeah. know. So then it's a question of like, would would the flames kill her she's been burnt at the stake like two times i think yeah. so and we know that like that hasn't killed her whatever the smoke was gonna take her first i yeah. guess but i still don't understand why timmy would succumb to smoke inhalation yeah but later on is like are they giving are they no i'm giving i'm giving credit too much credit to passions because i'm thinking here i am thinking are they giving us clues that timmy's like gonna become real later on yeah. because he does and like 
and because he's actually good and and yada 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 so he gets to become a real boy or well listen i uh we're gonna talk about one of your favorite characters later on i could not remember how he got off the boat and i did not like this Chekhov's gun thing that they gave us this little trap door i just assumed that timmy would end up getting out through the trap door and we would think that he was dead and he'd like bobble up from the water that's not what happens i do like that tabitha went back on there but it was very anticlimactic for me to like to like all this build up and then Tabitha yeah. just walk to the fires like no n- n- not an issue and they, at one point they fake us out and they think oh she exploded but no she just walked back on board and took him out and it was yeah. just like oh wow we spent the whole week <laughs> yeah we did spend some time on this but yeah. all is all's well that ends well but yes. this ain't well because now they're stranded on this island the boat is destroyed norma's on the island ready to hatch it everyone to death yeah now because she's like oh everybody's stranded here i'll get them all yeah so this is the moment where uh, Tabitha's holding Timmy and he, Reese just keeps laying into her and I was like, this is ridiculous. How dare you harass me uh, at a time like this? Um, and he keeps saying, well, she's a witch. Can't y'all see that she's a witch? I saw the doll moving in the, inside the inside there. Um, and Jessica's like, if she were a witch, couldn't she just teleport off the boat? Like, can you stop this? And I was like, thank you, Jessica, number one. Then he says, maybe the fire blocked her powers. And the whole group kind of like, they kind of like are like yeah whatever but it's jessica who goes oh maybe and i'm like <laughs> okay yeah the actress jessica was like i'm done with ross i, I can't do this anymore um so tabitha does this really cool thing that i was finally like happy that she said something because she he keeps saying the doll's alive the doll's alive and tabitha goes i'm going to admit it the doll is alive to me I know I'm kooky, I know I'm crazy, and I know I've gotten too emotionally involved with this doll, but he's all I have, and he's the most important thing to me. And the camera shows us uh, Timmy out of doll mode, smiling, and it kind of just stops it. Yeah, she thinks the doll's alive, so there, I admit it, and they kind of leave it alone. Yeah, Reese kind of backs off. Um, but then he does see a little glimmer in Timmy's eye yeah, and Timmy he's like, opens oh. his eye and looks at him. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's, but it's, but it's over for now. Um, Charity and then. then... Just, I'm on the side. Norma's just yeah. like, darn it. Yeah. Yeah. No, Star she's ready to kill everybody now. She's like, well, now yeah. at least she, Which... she's actually happy because they can't leave the island. Yeah. Yes, they're all stra- stranded on the island. And the kids talk about that, like, oh, my gosh, we're stranded here. Kay's like, well, we have plenty of food and water, and somebody will eventually notice that we're not, that we're missing. Will they, sweetie? Will, who, who, which one of y'all's parents, which one of y'all's absentee parents, <laughs> maybe maybe Reese's dad that works at the bank, maybe he'll call it in. Because Grace and Sam are all wrapped up in their bullshit, so wrapped up. They won't, they won't recognize that their kids are, are gone for three weeks at least. Like, yeah. It, it's going to be a long time before they are like, hmm, I haven't seen the kids in a while because Grace is too wrapped up in her bullshit. Yeah. Um, and then, they're, you they're, know, Pilar, Pilar's too busy with Ivy. Yeah. Pilar is too busy with Ivy. She don't, she's not, she does, she's not going to know where Miguel is. She's going to assume Miguel's with Charity. But Charity's on that island. And wh- what's the other ones? Oh, the Russells. I, TC's in his shed. We haven't even seen the Russells. But for all we know, the Russells are missing themselves. Yeah. Right? For they're, all we know, uh, they they missing persons. So yeah, those those kids are stranded at the island, branded a fool. Wait, what's what what's this? Will one? they say Monday at school? <laughs> what's that from? Greece. Oh, Sandy. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, what? okay. I was like, that sounds so familiar. Yeah. Yeah, they're stuck there. They are they're stranded. There. And if I were them, I wouldn't put too, I wouldn't put too much faith in my absentee parents <laughs> to come and save us. I just wouldn't. Um, Charity still is starts having her visions again, and she still believes that Teresa and Sheridan are in danger. Yeah. Um, and she then also gets a vision of Ter- she. We finally see a vision of Teresa, yes. where Teresa's screaming, "No, no, no!" And then the um the we it quickly pans to a vision of the kids all on the beach of this like island, um, 
writhing in pain, all yeah, of them on the ground. Smoky or foggy, and they're all in pain, rolling around on the floor. And she just yells, "We're doomed! We're doomed! We're doomed! You're doomed! You're good! You're not good! You're bad!" Yep. Um, y'all, I forgot to say thank you to the patrons, so let me give my shout outs right now. Well, it's funny that you're gonna do that because we just finished all the magic, and they give us a lot of magic. So they bring the magic into my life. Thank you to Munashe, Marcus, Breland, Lisa, Sid, Randall, Hannah, Camelia, Samantha, Jeanette. Eric, Fantasia, Sean, Larissa, Maria, George Lopez, Fitzgerald, Lisa, and Jessica Jean. Thank you all so much for being patrons. And like I always say, you're welcome. You're all welcome to join the patron Patreon. It would actually, it would be great if more people did join the Patreon. We're having a lot of fun. Um, I'd love to include more people on the things that we're doing over there. And uh, whatever. Hope you, hope you join. Come and have some fun with us. Talk passions with us. All right. So thank you all for being patrons, those of you who already are. And that's it. We're going to move on with the show. Yes? Sound good? Sounds good. All right, honey. From, from one island to another. From one island to another. Uh-oh. Uh -uh. Listen, we're on our way to Bermuda. Bermuda, Bahama. Bahama. Come Bahama. on, pretty mama. Ooh, we are musical today. <laughs> We're going on the down the Kokomo. We'll, we'll get there fast. fast and then, then we'll, we'll take, take it, it slow. slow. That's where the ship's gonna blow. Way down in Kokomo. Cause honey, they have we Basil, we got our two new assassins, Basil and Joan, I think. Is her name Joan? I couldn't tell I, if her name was Joan, June, or yeah. Judy. I, I, he called I, her three different names. Boris and Natasha. I don't know who they are. <laughs> His name's Basil, which is hilarious. Yeah, it makes um, me think of Austin Powers. Yes, me too. Um, so our assassins are planting a bomb on the boat. They we've met our assassins. I, there's so little to talk. As far as Shuis goes, there's nothing to talk about them this week. Yeah. Like, I have no notes on them. They're do I, Sh I wrote Shuis doing couple things. That's what they're doing. They're, like, making out everywhere, drinking champagne. And when they do have action, it's really more about Julian and Teresa and what's going on with yeah. Julian and Teresa. They, so, they, they do blum blum in the shower, though. They bloom bloom all over this place. Yeah. <laughs> Their DNA is all over this resort. <laughs> DNA evidence all over the resort. Just need a black light, black light, oh and you'll God. find all the evidence. But, Please. Please. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, I do want to say real quick, as far as the Shui stuff goes, we do meet the assassins, Basil and Joan. I'm going to call her Joan. I think that's her name. Yeah. Um, the plan is for these two people to plant... A bomb, make and plant a bomb on the boat that Luis and Sheridan are supposed to be chartering tomorrow, which is called yeah. the Island Dream. Um, they go and collect their money from from Julian at one point, uh, whatever. And uh, then they plant. They do plant, make and plant the bomb on the boat, and they say Sheridan and Luis. This was my f this was my favorite line from the whole week. It said. They said, Sheridan and Luis will be blown to smithereens. And anybody, if anybody's been, who's been listening to this show since the beginning will recall that when Roger had Jean-Luc's car blown up and, and Jean-Luc and Mimi were inside, this very, 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 very beginning, they were yeah. inside. And Laura said <laughs> on the episode, she, she said... Yeah, they they were blown up. They were blown to blown the smithereens. And I I don't know why that's so funny to me. Smithereens. Uh, so when yeah. he said they'd be blown to smithereens, I died laughing. I was just like, <laughs> smithereens is just a funny word to me, and it's just yeah. such a to me it's such a funny callback to the beginning yeah. of of this whole show when 
we started and we used I, we were oh. saying that a lot on during that that storyline like yep they yeah. were blown to smithereens <laughs> <laughs> so and this guy keeps saying it and it's so funny sheridan and luis will be blown to smithereens oh. uh so that's the plan sheridan and luis blown to smithereens sh smithereens <laughs> shitterings yep. shitterings shitterings shit rains down that would be horrible oh can yeah. you imagine okay so let's now talk about the other people on this island julian Teresa. my god um let's just let's just do it okay yeah, so, a, they're still they, flirting at the bar and finally they, they are, are they yeah. are not flirting that let's get that together oh sorry i'm sorry they yeah. are not flirting Julian is trying to take advantage of yeah. the situation. These two people are not flirting. Sh flirting. Julian I is Julian okay. is making this girl drink heavily because he he's manipulating her and coercing her into doing what he wants her to do because he knows that he has something she wants. Yeah. Okay, and sh what she wants uh, for anybody who doesn't know, she wants for Julian to reinstate Ethan as a crane so that um, Ethan will get back all the things that he lost when um, he lost his title, basically, and they can get married. Um, they, I mean, they can get married without this. This is just, I, I've already said how dumb this is. This is a dumb plan. It's, does Ethan even still want to be a crane, you know, after all that they've done to him? Yeah. No, I don't think so. And she should have had a conversation with him about it. But this is that's neither here nor there because he because we are here. So um, Julian's friends at the bar are making bets on whether Julian's going to, quote, close the deal with Teresa. Basically, if he's going to get her up to his room and sleep with her. Um, meanwhile, Julian gets her drunk. Let's be clear. He keeps giving her champagne and she keeps telling him, no, I don't want to drink. And he keeps saying, well, I don't know if I can negotiate if you're not going to drink. Like, it's just a, a, you know, a good faith, a, a show of good faith between the two of us for you to be drinking. And, rem and a reminder to everybody, Teresa is 18 years old. This man has to be 50. Julian is 50 years old. It's just, uh, it's just so hard to watch. And I think, I think in 2000, 2001, it was probably hard to watch, but I don't, I think with all that we know now and the things that we have learned post this time, it has become even harder to watch. Th like, this would not have played out this way on a on a television show right now. The music would have been different. There would not be really be any jokes. There's a lot of jokes. Yeah. There's a lot of like innuendo, a lot of entendre. Um and bar room talk. Like that's yeah. what we're not at the bar and it's the, a and lot it, of like innuendo's perfect. I mean, that's a lot. I mean, there's I wrote down a couple and they're they're not it's they're, they're, they're blatant. It's truly <laughs> stomach turning. It tur it turned my stomach watching watching how this all transpired. So we're gonna keep going. Um, they're still they're still down in the restaurant at this point. Uh, she tells Julian gets her drunk. At this point, Teresa's like desperate to convince um, Julian to take Ethan back into the family. She says she's gonna do it even if it takes all night. Yeah, so there's uh, some more Yeah, of course, Julian is like, hmm, 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 and it very well might take all night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and there's a couple other things that are going on as well. Um, at some point, it does turn into midnight, um, and that indicates to Julian that Ivy and Julian have, are officially divorced now. Mm -hmm. um, so, again, uh, another opportunity to get Teresa to drink. He says, come on, toast with me, toast to my freedom. I am no longer with Ivy. So let's Well, drink. he, so he, the, the clock strikes midnight. He says that he's officially divorced. And he says to her, I guess we're both celebrating our freedom. To yeah, which she I'm says, fine. I'm not celebrating my freedom. No, I'm going to marry Ethan. Like, I love yeah. him. She even, makes it so clear what she is there for. Yeah. Why she wants, why she e is even there talking to him. This is why... 
it just be, it just gets harder and harder to watch yeah. because she has made it abundantly clear that she is not interested in Julian. Julian is projecting his wants onto her at this point. Even, but and, and sure. she, she's trying to be nice because she's a nice girl, right? Yeah. She's nice. She's sweet. She's young. She's innocent. She's naive. And now she's drunk. But and even, now and, she's drunk. Yeah, and even Tipsy Teresa uh, continues to say, like, hey, Ethan would be a wonderful lawyer. He could help Crane Industries. You like, like, she keeps getting back on track, even in her, even in the amount that she's been drinking. And little by little, <laughs> Lindsay does such a great job of acting, like, gradually showing the amount of alcohol she's been drinking mm -hmm. uh, and, like, deciding... I don't think Teresa drinks a lot. That's the other thing. Like, well, like she doesn't said, drink at all. Right. So like the rarity of it, like she's definitely, it's going to hit her faster. Um, and it's, and she's so little, like, I mean, that's, if you're drinking a lot of alcohol, it's going to mess with you. So, she, but she keeps trying to, and even again, that at some point uh, she says something like, Oh, I wouldn't, I, you know, I'm, I'm a little nervous about us being here because I would hate for anyone to get the wrong idea about us having a conversation and he, she even has that awareness, at least. Of, yeah, about she does. Um, but yeah, she does try to she does try to drive home a few points about why he should take back Ethan. He keeps changing the subject, but she first she says she starts to talk up Ethan's legal great legal mind. She says that he was the best lawyer that Crane Industries ever had, and and he closed so many great deals. And Julian like agrees with her, which okay. Yeah. And then she says, and you know, I know that you love Ethan. I could see the pain in your eyes when you found out that Ethan wasn't a crane, that he wasn't really your son. And Julian has one moment of like humanity here where he comes down to reality and he says, yeah, it was the worst night of my life. And it was like a, it was like a sober moment, yeah. and, but he gets right back into his antics. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, he said something about like how Ethan reminded him of himself so much and, and that, uh, you know, he, he does have that little moment and it, it very little microscopic because he goes right back to his main objective. Yeah. So then Julian says, well, it's, it's pretty loud down here. Maybe we should find a co more quiet place to talk. How about we go to my room? She is not on board for this, he, but eventually he convinces her to go to his room. Yeah. Um, there's a little bit of back and forth. Um, Sheridan and Louise are like hovering around, but they don't see each other. They don't cross yeah. paths. You think it's going to happen, but it doesn't. Yeah, as um, they leave, the guys are like, they call Julian the master, the king, El Jefe, which I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Let writers try yeah. to get that Spanish in there every once in a while. El Jefe. Yeah, um, yeah <laughs> that he was gets. Good. That was pretty much how they said it. He gets him up, gets her up to the room. Meanwhile, down at the bar, and we have to talk about this because it lays groundwork for something that happens later. The 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 creep squad are sitting at the bar, yeah. right? And yeah. Sheridan and Louise come in in like their robes or whatever to get a bottle of champagne. And these guys are saying the things that you were just talking about and talking yeah. about how Julian had found some young girl and he's the master and he got her up to his room and yada, yada, yada. Um, and they overhear it and it upsets Luis, but he doesn't do anything right then. So then they go back to their room, start getting it on. Let's get it on. Um, meanwhile, read his seat enough on Bermuda. He's got to keep going. Meanwhile, their room is next door to Julian's, which, huh? I know. What, I mean, Julian is there to kill them. You would think he will try to avoid them. You know what I mean? Let's get adjoining rooms with the people on the bus. <laughs> right. Right. You would think you would try to keep your distance from them. Like, why? Because he, uh, let's be clear, he showed up after them. So well, he I, showed up and checked into a room right next door to his sister, who's on her, I, like, couple trip. I know that was where we were going with this, because even also, even before Julian knew that Teresa was coming over, he was hoping to get laid. Like, he was hoping to hook up with somebody. He pulled out his little black book. Like, he had these intentions. But how are you going to do that if you're going to be next door to Sheridan? Like, that's so stupid. I don't know why. Sometimes it's he, like, I, he, I know it's he a makes a point 
So he makes a point of saying that he owns this hotel. So oh. at, at one point, we hear that he owns this hotel. He could get any room he wants. Why would you get the room next to Sheridan? He could ask them where Sheridan is staying. He, that would be a thing you would do to avoid the people you're trying to murder. What room are they staying in? Because he can actually access that information because he's the boss. So does that right? mean that Sheridan has, she's getting freebies also? Because that makes sense for Louise to be asking for the finest bottle of champagne that they have or something at the thing. Yeah, and they put it on the room and he signs for it, but it's all on her credit card. But maybe, you know, again, because they are, she is a crane, maybe she's there for on for free, That's I guess? I thought, maybe, yeah, maybe, I, I don't know. I don't care, hmm. I mean, whatever. That would be badass. Can you imagine having somebody Hell who... yeah, listen. I don't know what the hell is wrong with Louise, because if it were me, <laughs> I would be getting everything I could out of these fucking people. I would be. I would. Yeah. Yeah. I would, and I wouldn't feel any type of way about this. Call it reparations. You owe me for this. My y'all got rid of my daddy, and you owe me. You now let's say you owe me something. You owe me back. So I wouldn't feel any type of way about it. And yeah. Luis is signing for that champagne, as if yeah. it's his, as if it's his credit card. Yeah, it was weird for them to be in their robes. I. I feel like it looked like a restaurant type of thing, like where they might have like a dress code or something. Yes, we talked about this on the on the um, last watch party because we yeah. watched one of the episode five thirty six on the watch party, and yeah, they were like outside on the beach or whatever, getting do, like doing sex, and then yeah. they come inside in their robes. Meanwhile, Teresa literally bought a whole ass dress because she felt like what she was wearing wasn't nice enough to go to this yeah. restaurant. She didn't think that they would let her in without, change, I guess, changing clothes, I guess. Um, but yeah, they're just walking around in robes. But again, Sheridan's a crane. She can do whatever That's she what wants. That's what I was about to, yeah. Maybe she just, she's got she's got sand falling out of every place, but the, the, it's all good. Let her get yeah. her bottle. Let her get her bottle. So, um, let's talk about what's going on with Luis, and, not Luis, uh, Julian. Julian and Teresa in his room. Same old, same, the same old things that are happening downstairs, but getting worse. Um, he, 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 they're really drunk at this point. Yeah, uh, um, his creep squad his, friends bring up another bottle of champagne yeah. um, and it's leave. Not, I like that. I called them asshole brigade is what I wrote in my notes. <laughs> Yeah, they're just so creepy. Yeah. They bring him a bottle of champagne. They drink some more. They're getting drunk, and they're make and now they're making noise. Teresa notably is getting sloppy. She's knocking yeah. stuff over. She's falling down. It's again. It's 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 hard to watch. Honestly, again, the mu the way they said it with the music. The music is a little like goofy, like, jokey. Yeah. It, yeah. But this is so so menacing and yeah. serious it's a it is a situation that i wouldn't want anybody to ever find themselves in and like you hear about these horror stories about these young girls who get taken advantage of after being drugged and after being you know once they're dr too drunk to stand and teresa is literally too drunk to stand she keeps falling down they're making a lot of noise because she keeps knocking over shit. Yeah. And Luis and Sheridan can hear all the noise, and Luis gets irritated with the noise next door. Now, he doesn't know that it's Julian next door. He's just like, what the hell are they doing over there? We need, we should confront them. So, <laughs> we, he goes out to the balcony because Luis, not Luis, uh, Julian and T Teresa are out on the balcony at one point, and he can hear the noise because she knocks over like a a giant pot of flowers um he goes out there and sharon's like this isn't the right way let's go knock on their door and ask them to keep it down so they go around go and knock on the door and um at this point teresa has gone to the bathroom because she keeps falling down she's like i'm a mess i need to go clean up uh, you know and so she goes to the bathroom and then they get a knock on the door and it's Luis and uh, Julian opens up the door and he's shocked to, to find Luis and sh shocked to find Luis and Sheridan at his door, even though he knew they were there. Now they're shocked to find him there because what the hell are you doing here? Like them being shocked makes sense. I don't know why he's so surprised to, to see them. He knows where they are. You're in. You, you chose the room next door to them. 
and earlier they were having a conversation about like isn't it weird that julian like is cool with us now like how come that's happening like they had that like refresher conversation about like julian sending them well wishes like so they set it up like so that they could have these conversations yeah so they are like julian what the hell are you doing here and he explains that he's there to get his divorce from ivy and they ask about Rebecca. They think that Rebecca's there with him, but he says, no, it's not Rebecca, which he should have just lied and said it was Rebecca. Yeah. But he says, no, Rebecca, it's not Rebecca. Um, and then Louise sees a woman's purse, a pink, a little pink purse, which I guess Teresa bought a purse to go with her dress. Um, a cute little pink purse uh, sitting on the bed or something. And Julian is like, no, that's not Rebecca's purse. And Louise realizes it's some other girl. Um, and then Luis starts to like, <laughs> Luis starts, his wheels start spinning, steam's coming out of his ears. He starts like positing these hypotheticals of like, if you ever touched my sister, it was like kind of a leap, not even going to lie. Cause it how did was, you get no, there? It was too much. It was annoying, but I understand why the plot device is there. It's to scare us and make us think that. Luis might show up and open that door, but it, yes, thank you. I'm happy you said it was the leap because I was sitting here going, Riders, you're not even trying. Like, this was very forced. Like, the connections they made were this. Yeah, um, the fear played off if he was just like, well, I want to know why you're here. Like, more adamant about that. And yeah. then he does have a rebuttal. He says he's divorcing Ivy. And so yeah. that is how he manages to kind of get them to leave at some point. Um, what happens is yes (laughs) louise Louise starts like this was i i want to just be honest i i loved this exchange for how ridiculous it was because louise says something that really just cracked me up so first of all louise starts like coming up with these hypotheticals oh i bet it's some young girl in there with you and you're taking advantage of her and like that makes me so angry because when i found out that Teresa was working at the crane mansion part of the reason was because i didn't want her near you and then he leaps to julian like if you ever made a move on my sister i would kill you and then he says now i can't do anything to you here but back in harmony harmony is my town i am the police i am the police he said harmony is my town louise is so self-aggrandizing like he he oh, cracks me great. up he, he cracks me up you, harmony is your town last time i checked the cranes owned every goddamn thing including your house like, <laughs> harmony is my town okay louise let's like calm down calm it down buddy but it, i liked i liked it i was like into it oh, but it cracked me up it, it, it yeah. was very reminiscent of i am the police yeah oh yeah but anyway he says and if i find he says harmony harmony is my town and if i find out you're going after any more young women you are a dead man that's what he said to him and then they finally just decide to leave mm. And it is at this point that Teresa comes out of the bath- bathroom, not having heard who was at the door. She just could tell that there were voices. Yeah. She comes out of the bathroom and Julian continues his lecherous pursuit of her. Um, and then he starts like massaging her bare shoulders because she's she's got this piece of fabric that's just barely covering her titties. And... And so, the, like, her shoulders, her back, everything's, like, out. If I remember correctly, uh, last week you said it was a piece of fabric that barely covered her coochie. It's, I yeah. feel like... <laughs> it's just her titties and a coochie. So, here, cover up. You know, she... I just, her, it's, Yeah, she just is not covered. And he is, like, massaging her shoulders and trying to get her to loosen up. And she's very drunk at this point, so she's just, like, kind of going with the flow, kind of, like... Like, she's out of it, this poor girl. Um, And this is the point when Luis and Sheridan go back down to the bar and hear the creep squad talking about 
uh, and the young girl specifically saying she was how innocent she was how naive she was how young she was and this like ticks Luis off and he's like I'm going back up to Julian's room and I'm gonna save that girl and it's funny because Sheridan is like you are the perfect man me I would be mortified well, like you are gonna get us in trouble like you are gonna get arrested like you know I, I, I just, it, it was, it, I see the nobility, but I'm like, this is, this is really, again, a very lazy plot device to get Luis to go back in there and scare us to thinking that he's going to confront, uh, that he's going to find the two of them together. Well, what irritates me is they could have just done this the first time. Yes, exactly. They could have just done this the first time, but they didn't. So um, he goes back. Imme almost immediately back upstairs they go back upstairs uh -huh. and um he's knocking on the door and he goes julian and Lu sh that's when that girl teresa realizes that's my brother yeah. and she's and drunk she's, she's like Lu it's louise i have okay. to answer the door and she tries mm -hmm. to answer the door she gets up to answer the door this man yanks her down throws her on the bed and puts his hands over her mouth yeah Again, I just want to point out that Lindsay Hartley does such a great job of, like, playing this. But again, yeah, that is such a, like, well, for, he does it because he knows he's going to get his, he's going to die. He will die if, if she opens that door. But yeah, the, it was hard again. Okay, so um, he covers her, he covers her mouth. And then he convinces her that it's in actually in her best interest that Luis not find out she's there. She's like, no, you know, he says, um, we still have, basically we still have a lot of talking to do. I, you all, you nearly had me convinced to take Ethan back. He says, remember how angry he w was when he found out that you or when he. I don't know. He was angry about something. You know his temper. Basically, well, he's like, you know, he's got a bad temper. Go ahead. And, well, and I was going to say, Julian's biggest self, because Teresa's like, no, it's going to be fine. Everything's fine. Like, he's not like, like, he, I, I'm just going to let him know, like, I'm, I'm what we're, what we're doing. And Julian, to his credit, to his manipulative thinking to save his own ass again, because that's what he does. He says, if you open that door, you know, your brother's not going to believe why you're here. And he's going to kill me. If I'm dead, he goes to jail. And Ethan is not a crane. Like, there's no one to adopt Ethan. And that is what stops Teresa from opening that door. And she's like, yeah, you're right. If I do this, uh, my plan's spoiled. Like, I I can't fix things with Ethan. And that's always going to be her kryptonite is Ethan and fixing it. So Yeah, he also says that she was already worried that people would see. And I think you know, said this earlier. She was already worried that people would see them together and get the wrong idea. Luis is going to get the wrong idea as well. So she agrees to, like, hide. Yeah. And he puts her in the bathroom. He goes and opens the door to Louise. Louise. Louise comes marching in, looking for the girl. He's like, where is she, Julian? I'm here to save her, basically. He goes and realizes that the girl is in the, girl is in the bathroom, knocks on the door, says, ma'am, are you okay? Like, do you need any help? Are you okay? Julian keeps interjecting, saying, everything's fine. You're crazy. Everything's fine. Yeah, you, Louise yeah. says, to Louise's credit, honestly, because if you're going to do it, do it all the way. Louise says, I'm not going anywhere until she tells me that she is fine, until I hear yeah. her say that she is yes, okay. you are right. I will and, say that the, what made me laugh is he, uh, I wrote down this note. I said, what is up with Harmonians? I, I don't even know if that's the right uh, thing to call Citizens of Harmony, but well, I don't know what Harmonians and their shit with having to tell everybody every single detail of their life. So he's talking across, he's like, I just want you to know, like, I just want to make sure you're okay because... I have a little sister. Her name is Teresa Lopez Fitzgerald. Her phone number is uh five one two eight three. I mean, he just goes on. He and says on she. And on. He says I've got a little sister named Teresa, and she's but she's back in Harmony where we're from. Yeah, like what? 
giving every bit of information to a complete stranger. I mean, it's just funny because Teresa last week tells this rando uh, her whole life story. <laughs> and I'm like, is it a low position Cheryl thing? No, it's a harmonia thing. All harmony people will, if you're like, hey, do you know what time the bus leaves? They'll be like, well, I live next to a woman named Tabitha Lennox and I believe she's been living there for about 300 years. Like you just yeah. search all, everything, confess yeah. everything. I, you know, it's funny you Our said, you, you call them harmonias and I, that sounds, that just sounds like an acapella group. <laughs> the harmonians. <laughs> the harmonians. The, yeah, they're an acapella group. I love it, harmonians. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Luis says he's not going to leave until she says she's okay. Teresa, you think she's going to open the door. I mean, I knew she wasn't going to open the door because I know what happened. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but if I was watching this for the first time, I would have I would have thought, hmm, she might open this door because she's like, he's being very understanding towards her. And he, he, he says, I... If you come out, like, I don't worry. I'm not going to judge you. Like, I know this isn't your fault. And so she's like, see, I knew Luis would understand. And she starts to come out. But then Julian talks over Luis and says, well, that that person's just a business partner. And as long as, and we're very close to closing a deal, but we won't be able to close that deal unless that business partner doesn't make themselves known to anybody else, as long as they don't show themselves to anybody else. And that's what makes Teresa stay in the bathroom again. The double, yeah, the double meaning, meaning if you open that door, Ethan's not my son. Yeah. So she kind of muffles her mouth with a towel and she's just like That's a great little voice too. And she's just like, I'm fine. I'm fine. And he's like, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. She says, I, it's okay, I'm fine. And he he and Sheridan leave. Like, that's that. Um, Lord Jesus. At one point, um, in the most menacing I've seen Sheridan in a long time, she goes up to Julian and goes, Lucky for you, that's not Teresa, because Louise would tear you apart. <laughs> like, Damn, fuck off. Go like, off, Sheridan. Yeah, I would have been scared of Sheridan right there. But Yo, like, I'm loving Sheridan right I'm now, straight up. Said, what do yeah. they name her after after all this? Don't they? Do they name her Diana? Oh, I, no, I can't remember, but I uh, it did make <laughs> me laugh at one point because maybe, I can't remember because... I know at one point, uh, Boris and Natasha over there fixing that bomb, and they can't spell Sheridan, and it made me laugh. <laughs> yeah, they can't spell Sheridan. For some reason, he carves their names into the bomb. Whatever. It's like, if it gets found, that becomes evidence. But I mean, it's already evidence, yeah. but that becomes, yeah. like, very clear, like, oh, this was a, a targeted attack on Sheridan and Louise, and who would, yeah. who wants them dead? Yeah. So, anyway, um... But I, yeah, I can't remember. I know where we're going, but I can't remember. Don't they call? Don't they name her Diana eventually? I feel like they. Well, I feel like they named her Diana. Yeah. Cause she's supposed to be the American princess, and I know I the 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 royals told told Patches to knock that shit off, but for some reason I feel like they, they named really? her Diana. Yeah, yeah. You don't. Oh yeah. So no. you know the very beginning of this show. I remember. They say that they're friends. That they she knew talks. Other. She talks at length about her Diana being Diana of Wales being her very best friend in the world, and that they were so much alike and so similar. That's why she has I the haircut. The, yes, I remember her hair is the yeah. way her hair is because she's supposed to be like the American princess. And yeah, the 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 royals told them to knock that shit off. It was like, it's like Whoa, it's, yeah. it's it's it's. Well, and it also it was just like so morbid. It was it, it, yes, it they is. had it's like good. they had like the 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 soul or like ghost of Diana show up at one point. It was fucked up. You don't remember that? <laughs> yeah. No, they well, made them they made them knock all that shit off. Um so basically Queen Elizabeth was like, "Listen, passions. Sheridan, <laughs> she's never going to be royal." Royal. No, she's the she's supposed they were calling her the American princess at the beginning yeah. of this. Um and uh, yeah, anyway, but that's why I think they call her Diana. Like I part of me thinks they name her they don't name her Diana. I can't remember. I I I know where we're going. Uh I don't know. Ah! Yeah. 
we'll get there when we get there. But I, I, there I think they name her Diana, which is hilarious. Anyway, um, and that's where we ended. Is oh, oh, creepy shot at the end. That's yeah. It. We got to come back to where uh, this girl comes out of the bathroom. She finally yeah. comes out of the bathroom. And she asks Julian, like, are you ready to, to take Ethan back? And he says, oh, we've got all night to discuss that and tries to give her more alcohol. And she's like, I don't think I can stay up all night. Yeah. I'm so sleepy. And then she crawls into this bed and starts to, like, pass out where and she's drunk out of her mind and julian starts rubbing up under her dress all over her thighs her legs and it was deeply 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 disturbing deeply disturbing it's one thing because he caressed her hand at dinner he did that stuff but this one the shot was very he's under it's because he's under her clothes at this point yeah um and it's he's fully he had already crossed so many lines we had crossed the line then we crossed the next line and then crossed the line and he's crossing over like the penultimate line like but it's so fascinating to me because it's like i understand maybe like a, a like a uh, you know a hbo max or like a, a max or um stars or something like maybe going that far but i'm like this was daytime tv in 2000 I mean, like this is well, know. what I will say is soap operas have have been notorious for rapes. Um, that's just that is a common trope in soap opera. So this is in no way shocking from that standpoint. Um, and they also you see a lot of like older man, young woman yeah. tropes in in um, and that they've taken advantage of. I remember. Stefano in uh yeah, I remember Stefano in um that other one lives. days of our lives Stefano he was always married to some young woman you know had all had tricked some young woman to into having to be married to him yeah. um but it, it's just that's that is something that they did and also like this was the time of lifetime movies lifetime movies were like big at this point and these are the same kinds of things that the lifetime movies covered and yeah. i will say two passions credit finally at this point in the in the show once he starts like going under her clothes the the tone turns a little more sinister yes, um yes. whereas the tone had been a little more light yeah the, it's all, just it's that it's that musical cue that's like, ooh, something scandalous is happening. Yeah, like, like this is bad, this is wrong. Yeah. We, you know, yeah. Yeah. he's a villain, um, yeah. framing it that way. So that's the last thing that's happening in Bermuda. Let's very quickly pick up with our children in, in harmony. Which yeah. what time is it? Because the clock has struck twelve, yes. everywhere, right? Yeah. Like we saw it happen in harmony. We saw it happen in, in um, Bermuda. However, yeah. Chad, Ethan, and Whitney are all at the book cafe at yeah. like one, two a.m. Book Is- cafe had a had maybe they had a, a, a hidden a hidden passions uh, reading party. <laughs> they, I don't so- know. It's a tw- it's a twenty four hour book cafe. I guess yeah. now because <laughs> they've just been here. The time it doesn't line up. It doesn't make sense. But anyway, Ethan. Um, Chad, Chad tries to convince Whitney that she needs to tell Ethan where Teresa is because he overheard Whitney on the phone with Teresa, who has turned off her cell phone for some reason. She called Whitney on her cell phone and then she turned it off, I guess, or maybe it died. I'm going to say it died, yeah. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, Ethan's been trying to call her, but she's not picking up. Yeah. Because he says it's off. But she was able to talk to Whitney. But anyway. Um, well, at least Whitney finally told Ethan what is happening. Yeah. And w- so, yeah, Whitney t- finally explains where Teresa is and why she's there. Explains that she's in Bermuda. She's trying to re- get e- Julian to reinstate you as a crane. Ethan is like, why would she do that? <laughs> you know, he he's flabbergasted at this. Um, but then he starts to worry about Julian and if Julian will take advantage of her because he's like, I know Julian and she's so innocent and I think he'll try to take advantage of her and take advantage of her innocence. So then he calls the hotel to try to get um, through to Teresa, but they won't put him through to Teresa. Um, the whole time, because it's too late, because it's too late. And Ethan does try. 
even does try the old I used to be a crane line, but yeah. it does not work as well as I am a crane. He's it like, was so um, funny. this is this is Ethan Winthrop. I don't know if you remember, but I uh, used to be a crane. <laughs> and the guy, the front desk is like, guys like, yeah, I I know, I remember, and doesn't matter. Um, can't let you through to another yeah, to a room that's says, late. Yeah, he says this is an emergency, and he goes, yeah, but you're not a crane anymore. So <laughs> then then he goes ring her damn room and the guy goes i'm not paid to be sworn at sir and hangs, <laughs> he up, hangs up on him and hangs up on him which i will say when i worked at hotels if people cussed at me i was able i was allowed to like hang up on them um right. uh, yeah i and i had i've done it a couple of times oh. like and like, it, as i laughed really hard at i'm not paid to be sworn at sir uh he then writes he he, he then says i really miss being a crane <laughs> Yeah, well, okay. So what happens is first ring. he tries to ring her room and they won't let him through. Then Whitney says, Why don't you try Julian's room? Even though again, they won't let they wouldn't even if he tried, they wouldn't they would never let him through, right? And uh, but I wanna say this that Ethan says she would never be in Julian's room, she knows better. <laughs> No, she doesn't, buddy. Um, and then he he calls and he's like, I'm gonna he says, Well, I'll just charter a flight down over to Bermuda. And there's like this silence, like everybody's like, Who's gonna tell him? <laughs> Who's gonna tell him he doesn't have any money and can't char charter a private flight at the drop of a hat? And he's like, Oh, I guess I'll have to fly um commercial. And so he calls to book a flight to Bermuda, but the earliest flight is in the morning, the next morning. Um and he that's when he says, you know, I really miss being a crane. I really miss because like if I was still a crane, I would be on a like they would be fueling up the crane jet right now. And uh, yeah, he says, I miss being a crane, which get, it does add a tiny bit of validity to Teresa's whole plan yeah. that that her thinking that he that wants those work. things. But the thing is, he doesn't he doesn't miss. It's not that he wants to be a crane again. It's that he misses the luxury of being a crane. Yeah, you know. He, yeah, he, he, I mean, if you never knew anything else, I definitely you're gonna miss it. Yeah, but he does sing it to the tune of Beyonce and Reba going, "If I was a crane, I guess I could get on a plane." Any time that I want it. No, she he, he 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 wishes he was a crane again, kind of, but not really. Um, so I wrote this little note, which is funny to me, might not be funny to anybody else, but Ethan then laments. Oh yeah. He, he laments being a regular person, but he's doing it to to an orphan. Like he, like Chad is an actual orphan who grew up on the streets, and and Ethan's like, oh, woe is me! It's so hard to be poor. It's like, well, at least you got to live the first twenty five years of your life rich. You yeah. know, a lot of us haven't had that much. You have like an Ivy League ed education, at the you very least. I know. Yeah. You're yeah. saying that nobody will hire you, but still, you'll be able to, like, do something. I, you, got, I did, you have uh, prospects. Yeah, see, they make it very clear that Ethan is on his way over there. He's going to go see what's going to happen. Um, but Ethan gives us a montage of all his Teresa, Teresa moments. And I, I don't know what song they used, um, but I think the song they were going for was Phil Collins's In the Air Tonight, because... I swear to God, at some point, I thought it was going to go, goo 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 Yeah. <laughs> I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh, yeah. Hold on. I, I yeah. swear, that's what, I think they were like, that would be a great song. We can't afford that, so let's write our own. Um, that happened at the very end of 340, and I'm going to be honest, I was tapped out by that point. <laughs> I was like, all right. It's over. Fifty seconds. Yeah, I kept moving. It's it. over. I don't even think I watched the montage. I don't think I did. Long too. That's why I kept fast forwarding it. Yeah, but that's basically it. Ethan's gonna head to Bermuda in the morning. They're just yeah. talking about. They they spend time a lot of time talking about um, Teresa and her being so innocent and being all of them being worried that sh that Julian is gonna do something to her. Mm -hmm. which he's doing which they you know they're being proven right in that he did say he's like i don't think my ex-father's up to any good if this is where we're headed 
and he he yeah. does call it. He's like, no, this is bad. Yeah. He's like, I, like I need to get over there. And again, be... I'm happy at least Whitney said something because, you know, I I get friend code, I get girl code. Well, I'm not a, I don't get it, but I get that there is a resemblance of like uh, in our friendship we don't do this, but she had to. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that episode of Degrassi. Everybody <laughs> You ever watch Degrassi? I, parts. Like I okay. don't remember too much of it. The very first, I think like two episodes. Uh -huh. Um Emma, who's like the main character, uh she's on chat rooms and it's in the same time period as this so it's kind of relevant she's in like chat rooms and she's talking to this one kid that she thinks is a, like a 10 11 year old boy 12 year old boy she goes to meet him at a hotel she but she does tell her best friend manny that she's going to meet this guy at a hotel and she tells manny not to tell anybody manny yeah. doesn't think it's such a good idea thank yeah. god for manny because because when this girl gets to this hotel it's a grown man, and this grown man is like, oh, I'm, you know, Connor's in the bathroom. Like, he's coming. Like, we're all here for a field trip. I'm just one of the cool chaperones, yada, yada, yada. But he, obviously, he turned out to be a, a, yeah. a child abductor or molester, rapist or something. Yeah. But anyway, Manny told, and that's the important part. Manny yeah, told, yeah. told her mom what was going on before it was too late, and they managed to get there and get Emma out of the hotel. And Whitney, like, Whitney needs to take a cue from Manuela because the, 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 she took too long to tell them where, where Teresa was. She really yeah. did, honestly. Um, but anyway, there's your little Degrassi. If you if you like it, start. I, I I used to love Degrassi. I feel like I've said that a few times on this show, but that was Passions and Degrassi were like my it shit. It gave us it gave us Drake, and it gave us uh, it gave us that awesome gif of the 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 boy who prances that he's walking. They, people talk about they say that he looks like Jamie Lee Curtis. I don't know who it is, but it's a very JT. Funny. I don't know. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that GIF. All right. Not Degrassi. Back to Passions, child. It's time to talk about these. Degrassi. It's time to talk about Degrassi. Disgracy, Degrassi. This woman is a disgrace. Disgrace is a disgrace. And let's talk about it. You know what? Let me ask you. You are, you're Catholic, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so when we get there, you will have to, oh, you yeah. you you're gonna have to defend your you're gonna have to defend your your <laughs> fellow parishioner because I'll see if I can hang in yeah there. you're gonna you're gonna have to defend her because to me the shit is indefensible the shit is indefensible okay I think, yeah so quickly let's get the recap part done Grace tells Pilar about David. She's at the church to like pray, I guess, or whatever. She tells Pilar about David crying, saying that, you know, Sam may not be my husband. And um he knows I put honey in my tea and I tilt my head when I read. <laughs> Definitive evidence. Oh my Definitive God. Evidence. Oh my, I tilt my God. Head when I read. She's so irritating. So yeah. She's telling Pilar all about David, and um, she says that maybe her subconscious all knew that she was married to David. That's why she kept getting those bad feelings when she saw him, and why she kept fainting every time she like saw him. Yeah. Um, okay, girl, fine. But um, meanwhile, Ivy's having a conversation with Sam, yes. um, where she like brings up Teresa, and he defends Teresa. He says, "I've known yeah. that girl all her life, and she would never do something like that." Like she, that she, she wouldn't have done that to hurt Ethan, but she also wouldn't have done it to hurt me or you. She yeah. would not have done that. He said she called Teresa a two-faced scheming tramp. To which Sam says, "Don't you slam Teresa to me? I've known her her whole life, and she yeah. would never do that." Um, yeah. And I thought that that was really cool to a, another person who. These are the two people that Ivy love and loves and respect the most, and she's not listening to them about Teresa, which is very frustrating. Yeah. Well, because Ivy... Ivy is a narcissist at the end of the day. Like, she mm -hmm. thinks she's always right. She thinks what she 
what she believes is right and what she wants is is more important than what anybody else wants always yeah. she puts herself well, above everyone always she puts herself even as much as she talks about how much she loves ethan she puts herself above ethan and yeah. her wants and needs over ethan all the time yeah. because if it was really about if she really cared about ethan she never would have passed him off as a crane she keeps saying she did it for him but he then grew up in like this weird loveless life where like he was getting love from you but watching his parents fight all the time Meanwhile, he could have had like this loving home between you and and Sam, yeah. and you well, could I, like. Yeah, it, it's 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 a difficult situation. I, I like that that she contrived that she did that. Yeah. Um, she um she says that Teresa admits to knowing about the paternity, and again, Sam, where he's really badass in one area of the week and shitty in another one. Here, he's incredible because he's like mistakenly keeping a secret and intentionally hurting someone are two very different things. Mm -hmm. And she, again, she can't respond to it. And again, Sam, like fatality for the last blow, just says, Why would Teresa do that? And she can't answer the question. Yeah. Like, why, why would Teresa send it to the tabloid? What does it do for her? And she can't answer that question. No one can answer that question. That it, like, if you could show me a bank account or a <laughs> deposit that showed that Teresa got something out of this, then you can say something. But she has nothing to gain from this. Nothing. Nothing. Z nothing. But and, and Sam, way to go, Sam. He... Way to go, Sam. Bless his little heart. He's going through a lot, but some of his little mental faculties are still working. Yeah, they're still there. Now he's gonna be stupid in this other storyline, but here we are. And honestly, Sam is like desperate in that other the other part of it. But let's let's finish here real quick. Um, <clears throat> so Ivy then changes the subject kind of slightly. She says. You know, I'm really worried about Ethan. I, I'm i worried that he will get too stuck on this Teresa stuff and he thinks that she, like, she's the only way that he'll ever be able to know love. And I want him to know and understand that he does have love from me and from you. Would you just talk to him? And um, then Sam agrees. He says, yeah, you know what? Sure, I'll ask him to dinner this week. And Ivy says, great, I'll come too. <laughs> And he's, he looks at her and she's like, no, Sam, this isn't another ploy to, uh, trust me, I know that we'll never be a family. This yeah, isn't another he, ploy. I just think I deserve to, I think I should be there because he's yeah. my son too. He flat out asks her, he's like, if you're using Ethan to get to me, like, I can't do, like, come on, please. And she's like, then she responded the way you just said. So yeah. um, at the same point, a little while later, uh, the Harmony bells chime and now it is midnight in Harmony and Ivy says, wow, I'm divorced. Um, and I don't know who I am. I, I fought for years to be Ivy Crane and, and Mrs. Julian Crane. And now I'm not that, and I don't know who I am anymore. Um, and oh my God. Oh, so I thought about you when this happened, because again, it is, it's like, okay, I, I know any, any time a marriage ends or something like it's a, it's you're mourning something that happened, whether you were happy about it or not, or whether the divorce was warranted or not, you know, it's going to be hurtful. But I thought about you right away when she says this, she goes, wow. She goes, I, I'm going to have to start moving soon because Julian's going to want me out of that house when he returns from Bermuda. She goes, well, and he goes, what are you going to do? She says, well, I can't exactly move in with Ethan. Can I, he doesn't even have a place of his own. <laughs> The homeless Winthrops. These Winthrops are homeless. <laughs> and the Bennets are too. The Bennets are. The, yeah. Harmony has a homelessness problem. <laughs> 50 population. Fifty percent of the population is homeless. I would have if I were if I were Sam. I'd be like, well, you know, why don't you just move in with Tabitha? Everybody else is. So. Yeah. <laughs> she's got the space. She's got the room. She's um, got a really nice, uh, nice, warm, toasty basement for you. Yeah, uh, but she, she's lamenting her her new situation. She's very downtrodden. He, she's sad, and Sam tries to comfort her, and he actually brings he hugs her. He brings her in for a hug, which she leans into for a moment, yeah. and then she pushes him away. Good, okay, Great. Ivy. She doing is this is a real interesting performance from Ivy. She pushes him away, and she says, "I don't need to be reminded of what else I have lost." 
Yep. And Sam's like, I didn't mean to make you feel bad. I'm sorry. He apologizes because um, she's like, I, you, I, you love Grace. I understand that now. You got, you're never going to leave her. I understand that now. But I can't. We can't be that close because it it it, it creates feelings in me, and I I just can't handle it. Um, yep. And Sam apologizes to her. What a what a performance from Ivy because yeah, we all know, right? And the question is, the question is, did the, did, at this point, at this point, was Ivy in on it or not? You know what I mean? Like, we know, but, but, like, had they written it that way or did they retroactively? I like to think that they had written it that way. Like, she, yeah, I I like to think that they had written it that way. So I'm going to go with that. So if, if, with that frame of mind, Beautiful, beautiful, beautifully done, Ivy. Snaps for Ivy. Because she's like laying the, she's laying the groundwork so well to be able to like say her hands are clean in the whole thing. Kay and Ivy are on the same boat right now. They are. Mm, no, how dare you? Well, well, they, no, hold on, wait, give me a second. They were on the same boat. I will say were on the same boat. They were trying to stay good, straight and narrow. And they keep saying, like, if somebody dies along the way, the, I didn't do it. So they were. Now with Kay trying to get Trina pregnant, we're veering yeah, off. No. Uh, He's taking no. That's like, that's like, that's like comparing, like, Einstein to, like, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. I don't, like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> like yeah, Plank. Even Plank was smarter. I loved Ed and Ed, 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 Eddie. But uh, yeah, no, Kay's, Kay's current plan, which has been the plan for a long time, she just keeps coming back to this plan, is yeah. just no, so, I, well, so terrible. I'll, my statement, I'm just saying they were trying, they're trying to, they were trying to be good. And they're like, chips may fall where they may. That's where they're at. But um, see, here's my thing. Exactly. I don't know that Ivy has ever been trying to be good, is the thing. I well, think she's playing at good. Yeah. yeah, I think she's playing at good, and I think she's doing it beautifully. Ma- this plan is masterful, yeah. okay? And I'm sorry for whoever I'm spoiling this for. If I'm spoiling it for you, I'm sorry, but, like, it has to be said because it's such an important portion, and most people who are listening to the podcast have seen this and know yes. know what's going on. And I'm not going to be explicit, know, but it's but like... I don't know when this reveal shows up. I can't remember. I don't remember when the that's reveal shows like, up either. I think it goes on I for a long, a long time. time. That's why I that's why I haven't been saying anything because I'm like, it, it's not coming anytime soon. I know that because I, this storyline is on for a long time. Yeah, I don't think we see it for a long time, but when it does come up, it makes so much sense. Yeah, and it just that story gets much more exciting. And I'm trying to make sure I remember all of these little moments, especially with Ivy, so that later I can put the pieces together and see if if my my view of this is correct or not. You know what I mean? Um, but anyway, let's go on. Ivy's doing Ivy. She's saying, you know, I I know I've lost you, Sam. I don't. I'm not trying to fight for you anymore. Or not, not um, the thing is, she never says, I'm not trying to fight for you anymore. She says, I know you'll never leave your wife. That's what she keeps saying. Yeah. She And that's what makes me think that Ivy, de- they definitely, definitely, definitely wrote this starting out as this is Ivy's plan. Like, that because she never says, like, I've given up what on you. you. That, that is a huge, that is a huge thing that supports your argument because... I'm thinking about it and it's like, oh, okay. Again, she has so much more to gain if she, well, she just said it. Um, you're not going to leave her. I, In order for me to ever have a chance, I need to find a way for her to leave you. Yep. That she she and that's what she says a lot. She says, uh, "No, I trust me. I understand you're not going to leave your li- wife. I understand that you love Grace. I understand that you, says, your marriage you is a important. Rock solid marriage. Yeah, and I I was a fool to like do this. Well, then Sam makes the fatal mistake. <laughs> I know, I know. 
<laughs> he just falls right into her trap, honestly. He makes the fatal mistake of telling her about his, uh, his troubles with Grace and David Hastings. Ivy is shocked, air quotes. Huh, what? What do you mean she has a husband? What? And then she says, well, why don't you just ask for the, the marriage certificate? And he's like, we did that. Well, and then she says, well, what about a polygraph test? I, he's like, we did that. And it's good. Oh, Ivy's doing a wonderful job. She really is. Because you know Ivy already knows what the hell's going on. You know she knows. But anyway, she she then, like, encourages Sam, says, you like you said, she says, you have a rock-solid marriage. I'm sure that this isn't going to deter you. Like, everything's going to be okay. And sends him on his way. Now, she doesn't believe those things. <laughs> she yeah. doesn't believe those things at all. Because, um... Uh, Pilar shows up and she tells Pilar, Pilar well Pilar comes to tell her she's this. like Pilar's like I have to tell you something and it's really important you you may want to sit down for this but I don't want you to get the wrong ideas basically and, and Ivy, Ivy says I already know and isn't it wonderful <laughs> isn't it, she amazing. says I already know isn't it, um, just like when Tabitha gets her powers back uh, just like when we were like, we're seeing Kay kind of act more like Kay again, Ivy comes into her full powers again. And it's like, I, it, Ivy Crane is back. Ivy Winthrop is back. She's, this has given her every bit to just start acting full on Ivy again and being mm -hmm. like, I'm going to get Sam. This is it. I, I'm, we're good. I'm good again. Yeah. So, I, I, and Ivy and is fully like, fuck, we're back here. Ivy is fully on the like she, she gets her hopes up. She's like she's like here's what's going to happen. Grace is going to leave Sam. Sam's going to be open for me to take him take him in and lick his wounds literally. <laughs> lick lick and, something. Lick a little something, lick a little something. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> anyway, she gets Hopes up, and then Pilar like knocks her down a peg and says like Sam is never gonna leave Grace. But Ivy's like, but Grace is married. Grace, he may not have a choice, right? Ivy firmly believes that Grace is definitely married. Pilar is like, well, there's still a question. They don't know for sure that he's her husband. Um, and so she, Ivy says that she and Sam will be able to be a family now and that she's willing to wait. And this is, um, this is yet another clue for me that this was Ivy's, that, that, that the writers had written in that this was Ivy all along, right? Because she says she's willing to wait because she knows this is a long game. She knows how long it's going to take. Yeah. But she's willing to wait and put in the time. Um, and then Ivy says our favorite line, it's fate. She says, it's fate. And uh, Pilar scoffs at her. Uh, fate. Because she's heard this before, right? From her daughter, Teresa. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Pilar's, Pilar's trigger word is fate. <laughs> she says, it's fate and I'm getting a second chance. And then the two of them go over to Tabitha's house it, where Ivy l eavesdrops on all the things that happen over yeah. there, which we will talk about in just Again, a moment. It just makes me laugh that all the action is happening at Eve's, uh, at, at, uh, at Tabitha's at house. <laughs> yep, while she's off on a flaming boat. Yeah, um, everyone, I'm like, what are the boys in the basement doing? Are they like, hearing all this bullshit and being like, they, what? They what? like the turmoil. They like it. You know what I mean? It's pain yeah. and suffering. It's PNS. PNS. Yeah. <laughs> So <laughs> um, Ivy says she's getting a second chance, right? So they go over the eavesdrop while Pilar, while Pilar stands piously by like, this is wrong. You cannot eavesdrop on other people. This is, then walk away. Yeah. Pilar, why are you still here? Go home. Go home. Check on your kids. Yeah. Miguel is stranded on the island somewhere. <laughs> Teresa is God knows where. Like, Check on your kids. You don't, you don't even know how the other Louise ones... about to be blown the yeah. smithereens. Check on your children. Smithereens. Check on your children. But no, you're going to stand here and be judgmental about Ivy over <laughs> uh, eavesdropping on these people. Like, go home. Go home. 
She makes me sick sometimes. Well, I know I you have, love Pilar, but she I makes me sick Pilar. sometimes. I, I have a soft spot for Pilar, but I will. I'm. I think I'm gonna make you laugh in a little bit with some commentary that I wrote down. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so Pilar. <laughs> let's talk about what's going on with Sam and Grace. So. Sam goes back to, uh, after talking to Ivy, he goes back to the house, finds Grace, and he tells Grace that he's still not convinced that David is her husband. Of course, this is his stance. I, I, I want to just say that because it's not going to change. His stance is David is a con man, a con artist. Anything that he knows about her could have been... Else. Wait, wait, what? I thought you were, I thought you were going to say David is a cunt. Oh, <laughs> Cunty, ah, ah, cunty, ah, ah, cunt, 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 ah, cunt, 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 ah, cunt to the cunt to the cunt, yeah, David Hastings, cunt, cunt, yes, give serving cunt, giving face, David Hastings in the place, yes, no, no, con, not cunt, or both. Oh, they're both. Um, no, this man is far from cunt. Um, no, he goes up at Tabitha's house. So, okay, Sam. Sam's talking to Grace. He, I, okay, I want to say this. Sam's position is that David is a con man. Okay, a con artist. <laughs> and. And he will not falter. He will not waver. No matter what evidence is put in front of him, he will keep going back to that and fighting with David about that. Yeah. So just be just be aware of that. that so yeah. he's talking to Grace, um, and she says that she doesn't think that it's a good idea for him to stay the night. He's like, I'm going to stay here with you and, you know, everything. And she's like, I don't know that it'll be a good, I don't know that it's a great idea for you to stay the night. Why? What the fuck? What? She's... This is not your house. First this of all, <laughs> your house is in a crater. Like, you... oh, Yeah, this is not your house. You don't decide who, who stays and goes. They but don't all... know Tabitha went with the kids. Oh, yeah, they don't. Does so Tabitha's gonna come in and some fucking man sleeping in like her library or boudoir or I don't know. Okay, she says, I don't think it's a good idea for him to stay there. And then he said, oh, she says, I want you to stay, but if I am married to David, um, but Sam stops her. He's like, I am your husband. David Hastings is not your husband. And she then says, well, okay, then stay and hold me and tell me it's going to be all right. Um, but then she just goes right back to doubting Sam as her husband. She's so, she's, I cannot stress, I cannot stress to you how annoying Grace fucking Hastings is right now. <laughs> yeah. Grace Hastings, she doesn't even deserve to be a Bennett anymore anyway. Like, why are you acting like this? I'm so, oh, she's so annoying. Um, so they just go back and forth. It's very irritating. All week long. It's all and week then, long. And then she says, he just, David just, oh, y'all, y'all don't understand. <laughs> As I was watching this, how irritated I got at this moment. Because I was like, this bitch better not. She better not. She says, David just knows so many things about me pause and i was and honestly i was sitting there like she better fucking not say it she better not say it and then she said he knows i put honey in my tea <laughs> he knows i put honey in my tea i'm so sick of that line she said it like three times this week yes she did he knows i put honey in my tea i'm sorry eric do you have you ever put honey in your tea well yeah because people have told me to try it I regularly, regularly yeah. put honey in my tea. It is a yeah. normal thing that lots of people do. Lot, tons of people do. It's just, oh, God, it's so... That's, I know I keep harping on that, and I'm going to... No, I'm going to keep on harping on it, because it's annoying and stupid. I just she reads... She tilts her head when she reads. <laughs> she She's so irritating. So, um... Yeah, I, <laughs> I wrote, uh, she says David knows so many things about her, question mark, question mark, question mark, Sp specifically that she likes honey in her tea. I hate her. I, yeah, <laughs> it's just, it is I'm, frustrating. 
I'm sick of her. I'm sick of her. And then they hear a noise outside. They go out and they find David Hastings hiding in the bushes. <laughs> what are you doing? Again, Sam, arrest him. Like, this is... Well, it's not your property, but like intent to He's do still trespassing. what he did. Yeah. Well, Sam accuses him of trying to kidnap Grace again. And he says, no, I'm just trying to see my wife. Um, and he and she like, says, she says, well, if that's the case, she says, if that's the case, why were you hiding behind the bushes? And he's yeah. like, oh, well, I brought you these flowers and I was just trying, <laughs> I was just trying to put some greenery with them. So I was like pulling some greenery from the bushes. And then Sam says, so you were stealing too. <laughs> yeah. Tabitha, somebody's been stealing your peonies. <laughs> so you were stealing too. Um, and then, like, they're, like, bickering a little bit. And Grace then suggests that they all go inside and talk about everything. It's like, just, like, set up a time. Like, say, we're going to meet at, like, the book cafe at 10 a.m. tomorrow, and we can talk all talk about all of this, but I need the night, you know, I don't know, whatever. Whatever, she invites the them in to talk. now because it's still open. <laughs> it's, it's 24 hours. Tw apparently, Beth is running a 24-hour cafe, which, by the way, speaking of Beth, <laughs> yeah. speaking of Beth, we haven't seen Beth at all. Now, we're going to see Beth soon, but one of the patrons was on the uh, watch party the other night, and yeah. can you believe that her favorite character is Beth? <laughs> and she was like, I know she's crazy, but I just love how crazy she is. I was like, fair, fair. <laughs> hey, listen, when we get there, Mrs. Wallace, Ed, Edna is one of my favorite characters. Yeah. Uh, oh, and I can't wait to show you all my impression of Mrs. Wallace, Bethy. Oh, that really? hussy, who hussy. You'll never be like Sheridan Crane. You'll Never be like her, Bethy. That's such a good. That's such a good impression of Edna. That's so and good. Have, I, and listen, that is from memory. I have not seen a clip in. The, that's just me loving that fucking character. I and do feel got a monkey coming that's gonna hang out with us as well, Bethy. Edna, Edna does actually make me feel some sympathy for Beth. She does. She's a horrible mother. If we're gonna if we're gonna talk bad mothers, she definitely takes the cake. She's top of the list of bad mothers. Yeah. But we're not there yet. We're over here with this bad mother, Grace. So <laughs> <laughs> we got another bad. We got this bad mother to deal with first. Um. So she tells the them. The bad mother, shut your mouth. Shut your mouth, shaft. So um, she tells them to come inside and and let's talk in here. Um, they start to bicker, Sam and David bicker back and forth. Grace starts to say, she doesn't, she says, I don't remember anything about you. Um, and she says, if you can't tell me anything that makes me remember you, then you need to leave us alone. And, um, he needs to have, you don't have, you need to have something that's going to help me remember. He then says, I can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that Grace is my wife. Dun, dun, dun. Cut the commercial, cut to everything else. We finally come back and it will change your life forever. Dun, dun, dun. Cut to commercial, <laughs> go to something else, come back. Then David tells a story about Grace walking on the, the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. She steps on one of those seashells and cuts her foot. And her foot has a, a scar in the shape of a half moon on her right. It's her right foot, her right foot. Yeah. D David says, uh, yeah, if you yeah. look at your right foot, you'll see that you have a, a scar on your right foot. Sam says, I know my wife. I know her body. And she does not have any scar on her right foot. And it's interesting that Grace never says anything. Like, has she never looked at her foot? Yeah. Because you're pretty familiar with your own body. I mean, unless it's like your back or someplace you can't see. Yeah. I'm, yeah. But like the sole of your foot, you would notice that you yeah. have a scar. Putting on a sock. Putting on a sock. This is what made me laugh really hard at this point was that <laughs> see if I can make you laugh. I mean, I'm, <laughs> so Ivy and Pilar are out there eavesdropping, right? And so mm -hmm. they're like, okay, if we find out about this footmark, like Ivy's like, if we have a footmark, then they are married, right? Because that's the logic of honey and our tea. Like that's where we're at at this point. And that's Pilar where we're at. Goes, I just wrote it down in layman's terms. I didn't write down what Pilar said exactly, but Pilar's like, 
Listen, Ivy, I get fucked up with the Bennets at the beach all the fucking time, and I've never seen that mark <laughs> on Grace's foot. And I'm like, does that mean Pilar's been looking at people's feet? <laughs> like, Pilar's got a foot fetish, and I don't shame her. But it just was weird dialogue. And then Ivy's like, well, maybe it didn't look hard enough. <laughs> Pilar's grasping at straws at this point. Like, she's just saying shit to try to get Ivy to leave. It was so dumb. It, it was, was so, so dumb. dumb. But yeah, she she says, I, like, I have, I I have never seen a scar on her foot. We're at the beach all the time. And let's I've go never... to the beach, beach, yeah. let's go get away. And I've never seen a scar on her foot. Okay, that doesn't mean it isn't there. Like, yeah, how closely right. have you looked at her feet? <laughs> I'm saying Pilar's got a foot fetish. That's what I learned. But, yeah, he, um, Sam's like, she doesn't have a scar. There's no way, blah, 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 blah. Um, this man, Sam's like super angry through all of this um sam angrily tells david to leave and david's like look take think about how i feel look at it from my perspective which is honestly a fair yeah. point yeah. he makes a fair point here he really does he says i was married to my wife and i've been looking for her for over 20 years and now i finally found her after seeing randomly seeing her picture in a magazine like Imagine how I feel. And Sam says, I don't give a damn about how you feel, <laughs> which is also valid, which is also valid. Like I, both of these perspectives are valid. Anyway, um, Sam says he's a con <laughs> and he yes, yes. Uh, he's a con man. And he said, then David said exactly what I think you said a couple of weeks ago. David says, one, he says, why would I con, a, if I was a con artist, why would I con a cop? Why would I choose, and the poli chief of police know uh, at that. And then he yeah. says, and wh why would I, what do I have to gain from you? You don't even have a house. <laughs> he said, you don't even have a house. Now see, that was cunt, that was cunty. Cunty, that was shade, honey. Serving. He said, you don't even have a house, honey. David Sweetie. Hastings said, yeah, David Hastings said the library is now open. Open, officially open. Reading is what? Fundamental. And he, baby, he read him down with that one. He ate with that little bit. He 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 ate with that little thing. He really did. Yeah. Um it's like why would I what do I have to gain from you? You don't even have a house. Yeah. Man has a point. The man makes some good points. He really does. Yeah. Um, so then David like tells the story about how Grace cut her foot walking around on the beach or whatever. And he says, <clears throat> I'll make a deal with you. If there is no scar on her foot, I'll leave forever. Sam says, how can we take your word for it? And he says, well, I'll do you one better. If... And this is stupid. If there's no scar on her foot, you can throw me in jail for one month. And then after that, I will leave. Huh? Yeah, what is he gonna charge you on lying about foot scars? He like, can't just put you in jail. He can't. That's called false imprisonment. Yeah. He already dropped the charges against you. You. I mean, and, he. You and, should be in jail. Yeah, and he's not the police. Luis is. Luis. <laughs> Lou, this is this is Luis's town. Harmony is Luis's town. Lest we forget, Harmony is my town. Mm -hmm. I am the police. Lu Luis is hilarious. Um, but anyway. She, he tells her, okay, Grace, take off your right foot. Take off your, take off your right foot. <laughs> it's like, can it you imagine her just pulling off her yeah, foot? Yeah, because she likes foot. She's got a foot fetish. Take her. He tells her to take off her right shoe. She takes it off. He looks at her foot. Lo and behold, he's like, yep, it's there. It's very somber. Yep, there is a, there is a scar there. No, I'm shocked. Everybody's Ivy Pilar back there. They're all shocked. He said, but then he says, which is correct. Sam says, yes, she has a scar. That doesn't mean y'all were married. <laughs> right. But Grace then brings up, but he did have a marriage certificate. Like all of the pieces all together, those. all of the pieces together are pointing to like, this is a, this is a plan with zero holes in it. Yeah. It There's, no, there's everything is lined up and right in order. I am at of the mind, even though I know exactly what's going on. I am of the mind that David Hastings is absolutely 
Grace's long lost husband. If yeah. I was in that room, I'd be like, man, Sam, baby, give it up. That's it. All you can do now, all you can do now is fight for her to divorce that man. Yes. At this point, he needs to stop. He what he needs to do is stop pushing against it. Go with it and explain to her like we can be together, but you have to divorce like you have to divorce this man. Anyway, let's get into it. This way your cat this way your Catholicism fault comes into play. Cause Grace is falling to pieces, right? Yeah. And yeah. the two of these men are yelling at each other. And then she finally gets them to stop yelling. And she asks David to leave because she's like, I still don't remember anything. I don't and that's when this man start brings up the little angel girl. Okay, so here, okay, I want to build up to this because it's so much like, it's so exciting. So first of all, Grace has a freak out moment and she's like, we're going to deal with this like adults. And Grace <laughs> freaks out. And she's like, you've done nothing that has made me remember. So I'm going to ask you to leave. And he's like, wait, I got one more piece of evidence. So here we go with another. And Sam was like, what another, what another croc, you know? And then I wrote down, Holy shit, he brought up Latara's favorite character. <laughs> the man knows the angel girl. That's it for me. He knows that he knows about the angel girl. That's who else would know that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and he so he first of all, he brings up the angel girl, but then he says, and you loved angels. You used to always pray in front of an angel statue at church, and we always had angels in the house. And um Grace was like, I do love angels. I always had angels in our house. Remember, Sam? Remember our house? <laughs> Remember our house and how it always yeah. had angels in it? And yeah. he's like, Yeah, but he probably saw that in a picture. And she was like, No, all the pictures were like outside and after it burned down. And um he's like, Well, he probably heard it from one of your friends. Again, this is a point where where Sam needs to yes, admit and and try to mitigate the damage and try to figure out he he needs to be going into damage yeah. control now instead of trying to say that this is all a lie because yes, it's just it's, too much. It's too big. Thank you for saying that because it frustrated me that I'm like I get it. I know that he's got a hunch and and he can follow his hunch all he wants to. But I hate that he's like he's fishing Grace. I'm like, bro, you know nobody's running around talking about little angel girl, but Grace maybe Charity. I was like, but then he also tried to blame <clears throat> Pilar and Eve for it. He's like he probably heard Pilar and Eve. I'm like, what, do you think this man's not stalking Pilar and Eve? He's stalking your wife. Like, who's having a conversation? But hey, remember the time that Grace talked about that little angel girl? Like, yeah. This is much um but definitively he's like your mother told you about your powers and that's to me i'm like that's that's a lot of information that he should not have mm -hmm. and that's not a tabloid maybe <gasps> oh my god what i know the answer tell me the answer i want to know the answer david hastings red hidden passions at me because i was like oh an epiphany and he didn't read the last page where the spell takes and he over. remembers it all well i mean that's canon in the show that is canon in the show that these there's in this world in this universe hidden passions exist and there's all of these answers yeah yeah but um he does you got me with that one i i i, yeah. I must admit i was like huh what what is it? Because you were like, oh, it really, you really got like that epiphany look on your face. Like, oh, I got it. And I was like, oh, holy three, shit. Yes. Three degrees in theater. Yeah. Three. The doctor's in the house. The doctor. No, it's um, just so silly that, uh, again, he if he's bringing up little angel girl and special powers, like nobody's running around in the world saying they have special powers. Yeah. You're, 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 it's a computer. I mean, maybe that's, you know, but I don't know who else. Oh, to read the Long Island medium. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Teresa Caputo and I talk to the dead. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot all about her. Um, Yeah, so he brings up the angel girl he says you the angel girl used to appear to you and tell you about things in your life to come like these are damning allegations That's <laughs> like too many. um it's just you're just not going to overcome this you're not going to sam i'm sorry it's just yeah. how, that how would he know that how would he know that and honestly i'm trying to figure out i'm trying to remember how does he know those things? Yeah. I assume from like Ivy Pilar okay. probably told Ivy and Ivy told him those things. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Whatever. Um, 
yes, he talks about her powers, which let me be clear, this is also this probably comes as somewhat of a relief to Grace because Sam always kind of tells her she's crazy. Right? Like he doesn't believe in the angel girl. Yeah. He doesn't believe in Grace's powers. He doesn't and, believe in any of that. And they just made it clear recently that like uh, Grace can't talk to anybody about her powers, only to charity. So yeah. like no one believes her. No one, I mean, she might bring it up, but Eve and Pilar are not going to go into that. Like they don't. And so, yeah, this is damning evidence that he knows something that he shouldn't know otherwise, other than having been married to Grace. Yeah. And so um, he, Sam tries to throw him out. Sam still thinks it's all a big um, con and he, he tries to throw David out. But David says, I'm not going to leave without my without my wife. And then he then says, you don't remember, do you, Grace? No, we've established that over and over again. We've established that so many times at this point. You don't remember, do you? No, no, oh, I, I know. Not. I, I have amnesia. How many times do I have to tell you this? Do you have am, have amnesia? Do you keep forgetting? You got that 50, 51st dates disease? <laughs> you like the same, uh, five, five second, whatever his name is, or 10 second, whatever his name is, where he yeah. just like everything. Over and over again. So anyway, um, he's like, he pulls out his chain and he's, he shows her his like patron saint around his neck. And he's like, we're devout Catholics. Huh? He says, we're devout Catholics and we can't turn our, we can never turn our backs on our vows. And Sam then says, so what? <laughs> yeah. Sam says, so what? And I would say, I'm period. And, but Grace says, it matters, Sam. You know it matters. Bitch, get the fuck out of here. When I say, I would be so mad. I, <laughs> I feel bad. Yeah. But you know what? Part of me says, Sam, cut your losses right now. This lady sucks. Yeah. Go, you know, you just go on and get with Ivy. She's there. She's available. She's, yeah. So I don't, I wish I knew all the answers about this. Obviously, I, I'm not married. Um, But I know that in the Catholic Church, you, divorce is very frowned upon. You're supposed to stay together no matter what. Um, But they do, the church does grant annulments under understandings. Like, this is, to me, one of the most, like, Let's say this is real. All of this is real. Everything. T Timmy's a doll that lives. Everything's right, real. Right. Under the circumstances, uh, and, and they got it. I would assume that they had to go to their diocese. So then that means they go to Father Lonigan, and then Father Lonigan would then go to the bishop, and they would ask and figure out like, hey, these are extent. These are the most extenuating circumstances anybody has ever faced in any marriage. Like this is extraordinary so i think that they would grant them an annulment and grace would just have to make a choice i feel like they are making catholicism sound like grace is an evil person for not honoring the first marriage when she's been married over here also at some point it, so i i think it's all conflated into this weird like we're gonna blame everything on this because even Grace said something that really jarred me. Uh, at one point, she was like, what are we going to tell our kids when I tell them they're illegitimate? Yes. Oh, my God. Fuck? I'm so glad you brought that up. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. How are they going to handle being uh, actually being illegitimate children? First of all, why would you tell them that? Why would you why would you even why would you even describe your child as illegitimate? Why would you that, do that? That's something that outside people say about your kids, but you don't say that to your kids or about them. And also, like, it's 20, well, it's not, it's 2023 now, but it was 2001, girl. Illegitimate. That's the kind of shit we talk about for, like, heirs in the 1700s. Like, or, kings have illegitimate yeah, heirs. Like, like, Grace just put herself in the fucking scarlet letter. She thinks she's Hester Prynne. Like, she's not going to walk around with a scarlet A on her, on her chest. Like, I, I was jarred by the fact that she would tell Noah and and Kay and Jessica, y'all are illegitimate. Like, no, it just yeah. because, first of all, mama, you got to give yourself some grace, Grace. You did not know this happened. This is, yeah. little, um, again, I really do. And again, just, I, I did a quick Google search while we were chatting because it's just like, again, how do you arrange an annulment? Annulments are this idea again if you get divorced like in the catholic church you're you're not allowed to go get the body of christ you're not to go you're not you know there are things that they'll they're they're gonna 
I don't want to use the word punish, but there are things that they're like, well, you can't do this until you right. fix things. Um, but I'm sitting there going, this annulments are granted in extenuating circumstances. Uh, the annulments are granted within reason for the church. So again, I'm a progressive Catholic. I don't believe every. Well, I I think I think somebody's upstairs, and I think they're humorous. I think that they have also evolved over millennia. Um, so I don't believe everything. I, I always say I'm a progressive Catholic, but when it comes to this, I'm like, no. They they would go talk to Father Lonigan and say, listen, this. I mean. Father Lonigan knows them also. It's not like you don't know, you know, your priest. Here's just, what, here's Eric, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to end it. We're going to finish it, but we're going to do a, we're going to do a bonus episode. Um, mm -hmm. That's going to be available over on the Patreon. So if you want to hear us continue this conversation, you can um, check out the bonus episode on the Patreon, but we, yes, we will pick up this conversation because I have more to, I want to talk more, especially about the Catholic, the Catholicism of it all, yeah. the religion of it all, and just like more just silliness. So yeah. let's close out and then uh, we'll hop on another one. All right. So hey, this was fun. This was, uh, again, what a, uh, another week where this week was kind of we're like kind of running on a treadmill. We're getting to a major event, but mm -hmm. there was still some fun stuff throughout it. And uh, Jessica yelling at Ross. You know, and we got we did get some plot moving devices. Some things yeah. happened, so I I was pretty happy. It wasn't because some weeks can be literally zero, nothing, absolutely yes. nothing. And this week we we got at least to fifty percent. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I, so it, it's going well right now. All right. So with that said, remember you can always follow me on all of the social medias. I am. I think I'm going to get rid, not get rid of. It'll still be there, but I don't think I'm going to be using Twitter anymore. Um, oh. I've already stopped tweeting really as much, but um, it just. I think it's about happened. to become a. It's like going to be a paid service, and so just so you know, if if that's the only place where you have been like getting any updates from me, you will be getting even less updates than you've been getting, um, because I'm. I think I'm gonna get. I'm think I'm gonna just take X off my phone entirely. Um, so anyway, with that said, check the link in the bio, buy some merch, join the Patreon, help a sister out. I'm struggling out here, y'all. So with that, you are my passion for life.